So I'm Brian Stewart. I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Cambridge in the McDonald Institute for Archaeological Research. And my, my main interest is uh, the so-called Middle Stone Age and the Later Stone Age of Africa, and roughly that amounts to the period of time between around 250,000 years ago and about 20 thousand years ago, depending on where you are in the continent. And I'm especially interested in um, early modern human forms of behavior. This is when our species evolved in Africa, uh, both anatomically and also uh, behaviorally. And I'm interested in trying to understand um, especially the, the behavioral side of, of our evolution. Well, ostriches themselves are found all over Africa, and, and therefore so are their eggs. Um, and at some point in the deep past, our ancestors, African hunter-gatherers, realized that these were really useful tools. They were useful uh, uh, mainly as, as, as water containers or, or, or water flasks. Um, ostrich egg shells are actually really strong. You know, they, they, they have quite thick walls. Um, they've got an egg shape, which is inherently quite, quite robust. And they're a really good volume. Um, the average volume of an ostrich egg is about a liter. And so they would have been really useful water containers, not too heavy, not too cumbersome. And, the, and people in uh, the modern and recent Kalahari, Kalahari Bushmen, would take these on hunting expeditions out into the desert and they would have they would have been used like 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 canteens and the way they made them is basically they would steal these ostrich eggs from the nests of ostriches which is quite tough because ostriches can be quite nasty and aggressive so they would steal them they would then drill a hole in one end um, and using a piece of grass or a reed they would have um, then kind of whipped the egg inside the shell poured it out over a preheated surface, usually um, just sand surface. And in, in, in the Kalahari, um, Bushmen are known to make these huge omelets out of these, out of these eggs. So after eating the egg, they would have then washed out the container and then poured water inside and, and, and used it. And the use life of these things is actually really long. They've got, um, we've got evidence of, of people using these for years, you know, one, one eggshell for several years. So they really were quite robust. Ostrich eggshell flasks would have been hugely important. Um, they would have allowed people to bring water into areas that were extremely arid. Um, a lot of Africa is, is covered in, in desert, and that would have been even worse in the last ice age when you had even drier conditions. And so this would have allowed people to, uh, um, you know, colonize these, these areas. We know that in, in the modern Kalahari Desert, Bushmen use these on hunting expeditions, and it's really good for pursuit hunting. And that's when you have Bushmen who uh, use poison arrows to take down very large animals. The arrow usually wouldn't have killed that animal, but the poison works, and it works very slowly. So the Bushmen then have to pursue and track this animal maybe over even a couple days. And so, you know, doing that through a really hyper-arid landscape would be really tough. And so without this kind of technology, um, it would be effectively impossible. And not only did they bring these with them and carry them around, but they also used to cache these things in various parts of the landscape. So they would actually bur dig holes and, and bury these ostrich eggshells full of water in, in strategic points through the landscape and remember where they, where they put these things. So this was all part of different strategies to use these as instruments to colonize very dry landscapes. Well, decorating eggs is a big tradition at Easter, but we know that decorating ostrich eggs has a much deeper an ancestry, much deeper antiquity. Um, we're not exactly sure why people decorated eggs, um, but we know that it's a very ancient practice. Uh, we're excavating a site in Namakalan, which is just south of Namibia in, in South Africa, uh, called Spitzkloof, and there we find ostrich eggshell fragments of all sorts of different colors. We find, you know, kind of teal blues and reds and oranges and browns and blacks. And a lot of this could have been accidental discoloration from, from burning or even from changes in the sediment as it, as it sat in the archaeological site over time. But some of it, especially those really vibrant reds, um, could have been intentional. And we did experiments in the desert in Namakalan when we were in the field to try to ascertain broadly on a preliminary basis kind of what was causing this discoloration in an archaeological site you have different layers. People obviously are living on the uppermost layer on the occupation surface and creating fires and hearths on that surface. And that might have been affecting ostrich eggshell fragments in underlying layers from previous occupations. So to try to mimic this, uh, to try to understand what was causing these colors to come out, we created, we conducted experiments. So we built fires uh, that we fed over many hours so they became very hot. And we buried ostrich egg shell underneath, underneath these, these fires. So we had ostrich egg shell on the, on the surface, right under the fire, then five centimeters below that, then five centimeters below that, then another level. So we had uh, ostrich egg shell fragments uh, uh, at levels going down 20 centimeters below the actual fire. And what we found was really interesting. Basically, the ostrich egg shell fragments closest to the flames, the, the ones that were exposed to the most heat, went either black, 
or sometimes white, and that's because they were um, really, really heavily calcined, really heavily carbonized. And then as you went further down away from the fire through the sediments, um, they became more brown. You had uh, very deep browns, and then they became kind of like a bright yellow, like, uh, like almost like a really sunny sort of yellow. And then underneath that, they, they turned sort of an, a, a, a milky sort of off-white. And that's interesting because we didn't find some of those really vibrant colors, except for the yellow. We didn't find the reds. We didn't find any of the blues. And so that might be suggesting that they were actually purposefully treating these in some way in order to bring those colors out and that it wasn't just accidental burning. Mo much more certainly, there's uh, a another, particularly one site called Deep Kloof, which is uh, uh, further south uh, in South Africa from where our site is. And you've got evidence there going back to 60,000 years ago of people very definitely intentionally decorating ostrich eggs by incising, carving lines on the eggs uh, in geometric patterns and other patterns. Uh, um, um, and, and, and this is very similar to what people do today in the Kalahari when they decorate their eggs. And that signals ownership of individual eggs. But more generally, it, it, it may signal uh, belonging to a group, um, not just individual identity, but also group identity. Ostrich egg shells would have been really important for colonizing very challenging environments, very arid environments, because they would have been used as, as water flasks. Um, but ostrich egg shells are also really important after they break. People would have taken the fragments and they would have ground them down into ostrich egg shell beads. And we know in the modern Kalahari and going back to about you know, 40,000 years ago and maybe even earlier, that these ostrich egg shell beads were really important because they, they bound people together through interaction, interaction and exchange networks. People would exchange these beads sometimes over enormous networks uh, uh, spanning you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles. And so this would have been really important in very challenging environments when resources in certain areas were, uh, were, were becoming uh, more scarce. People would have had to rely on relatives and friends through these interaction networks in order to make sure that, that other areas they had access to once their area was becoming uh, 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 more difficult to live in. And so ostrich egg shell beads became kind of a currency of drawing people together through these uh, effectively very long, very extended social networks. So they would have been very important in that respect. So until about 10 to 15 years ago, it was thought that the earliest artwork in the world, and therefore some of the earliest expressions of, of, of modern human behavior or, or symbolically imbued behavior, was about 30 to 35,000 years ago, uh, and it, that had occurred in Europe. But discoveries made over the last decade or so in, in, in Africa, particularly Southern Africa and also North Africa, have now shown that actually the earliest expressions of, of modern human behavior and cognitive, real cognitive complexity, things like symbolism, are at least double that age. They go back to 60, 70, maybe even 100,000 years ago. And ostrich egg shells are actually at the core of that story because some of the earliest artifacts we find with, with absolute definite evidence of, of artwork in these geometric, you know, which is these geometric engravings, are fragments of ostrich egg shell, which are ancient water flasks that were effectively decorated, just like water flasks are today in the Kalahari Desert. So ostrich egg shell, as unassuming and kind of random as it is, is actually really central to the story of modern human evolution.